Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a real juicy, fun guest who I know you will love. If you follow him on Instagram or TikTok, he's hilarious. He's a former publicist who is spilling it all, giving us all the juice. He's hilarious. Amir, I'm not going to say your last name. It's okay. It's Yasai. It's hard. Think Yas yes. Queen, and that's my last name. And um, and so he does this really funny TikTok, and I've I've already explained where I'm addicted to TikTok, where I like don't even want to go to the app because it'll be two hours later. <laughs> But I discovered you on there, awesome. and you do like the green screen where you'll like show a star, and you do this thing, and then you're like next, next, and, <laughs> yes, and so that's really funny. But I want to get to, you know, it seems like you. Per I, I've before you came, I said I feel like his story was he was a publicist in Hollywood, COVID hit, and it lasted a little too long, and he finally was like, fuck it, I'm doing something else. <laughs> Is that what happened? That's really truly what happened. So I got fired. <laughs> I got fired from my last job in December. Um, okay. I was working for this British PR company, and they were just like, we don't need you anymore. And off I went. And then I just started, you know, in January, I started just posting videos on Instagram, joking around. And then TikTok happened in March. And then yes. the COVID hit. And I was like, you know what? It's fine if I'm not 12. I'll just jump on this, and I'll do my best. And I did it. And so now you're back living at your parents' house yes. in beautiful Orange County, yes. which I definitely want to come out there again and enjoy the beach before, before it gets shut down again. But um, so so are you worried at all that you're like spilling fun tea about these celebrities, that it'll affect you in the future or you, you don't care to be a publicist again? You're now a star in your own right. Well, What's thank you plan? for saying that. Oh, what a, what a pinch me moment. Having you say I'm a star in my own right. What's happening? Is this my life? Um, you yeah, know, literally, I, I think I just got tired of hiding. If you're, yes. it, For people who don't know, if you're a publicist, you're hiding. You're behind the camera. You're just trying to avoid getting shot. When I used to work for Michael B. Jordan, you don't want to be seen. You don't want to be heard even. And I got tired of it. I was like, why do I want to do that job for literally dollars on the penny? Like, I'm getting nothing. You get nothing as a publicist. So because you worked for the firm or did you have your own clients that you would like charge a monthly fee for? Ugh, the clients I had on my own were nightmares. It was like a popsicle owner that wanted to be on the Ellen Show. Delusional people. <laughs> like it was the worst. And I get like $600 and they would yell at me for not being on the cover of Vogue. Like <laughs> delusion does not begin to oh explain my, my own clients. So I just got out of it. My dad thinks I'm a drug dealer to now still. Oh, really? Yeah, he has no idea what I do. So does he think you're delivering drugs to, to yes. the Calabasas area? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Poor old Jafar. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you an only child? No, I have a younger sister. And what's her story? She's just like a author. She is like a real life. And I'm just like the kooky, crazy one in the corner doing next in my bedroom. I mean, it's <laughs> nuts. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay, let's get into some yes. people. So you do nice ones. You, do, you just do honest ones. And I we'll start out with the nice one. Okay. Um, J-Lo. She was lovely. She was absolutely lovely. I had to basically blow an assistant to get on that shoot because I worked for a photographer. And she was just amazing. Like, such a hard worker. She literally was nice to everyone. She did request, like, cold water at all times. and had to be a certain temperature, but that's J-Lo. It's fine. And candles, and she required a lot, but she was just absolutely lovely. Like, I would work with her any day. And, you know, with all that talk of, like, you know, what... Because there's been so many articles for, like, the last 10, 15 years of... We got the, um, what do you call it? The, the rider. The rider. We got the rider and the jelly beans have to be separated and you have to <laughs> bring in couches and all this stuff. And, you know, but then when when I actually like would be performing and have a rider, I feel like what's on your rider? I'm like sugar free Red Bull and a little bit of food. Like, <laughs> that's a healthy choice. Oh, you're like, so down. I love that. You know, but even then there'd be times where they'd be like, <sighs> um, we only have the regular Red Bull. <sighs> like, they're going to, like, freak out. I'm like, that's fine. Like, I mean, we did tell you, like, three right. weeks in advance. Right. And, you know, it's not a lot. So I'm just by myself. I don't have a band that you have to feed. But, okay, don't have the sugar-free Red Bull. Because, God forbid, I'm going to be on your thing. Mix! Like, saying that I was <laughs> Don't be fan. difficult. I told <laughs> Jenny McCarthy. I was like, don't be difficult. I will put you in the video. <laughs> but um, the few times I – and I have met now J-Lo like three times. Mm -hmm. Once at Chelsea Lately, just just gorgeous delight, eat her up oh. with a spoon. Then at Chris Jenner's Christmas Eve party, oh. went and talked to her. Nice That's when invite. she was with Casper. Take me in your pocket next time, please. Oh, I'm not – I've got the boot when it moved to Kanye, so it's okay. Oh. Um, but uh, just so nice. And then I saw her after that. At Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hills. Oh, she, she remembered me. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> I think she is the most gorgeous woman that there is. Agreed. Love her style. Absolutely. Love everything. And uh, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, though, when, when there's consistency about a star. Mm -hmm. And then you really know it's true. But, you know, I also go, I also sometimes feel bad when there's an, a situation with a star that um, maybe they had a fucking bad day. True. You know, like everybody, you, we see everybody be a bitch sometimes at Target I'm or a whatever. Bitch all the time. <laughs> and like, you know, or, and then I, I always joke and said, God, I'm just, I'm just famous enough that I can't really be the way I want to be sometimes when I get shitty service. Like, True. I mean, someone could, I always say, someone could shit on my Chinese chicken salad. Like, there could be a dump on my Chinese chicken salad. I'm leaving you 20%. Oh, God forbid. You don't want to like, end up on page six, yeah. Yeah, or like yeah. anything like that. But there are times where like, it's hard. And I think a little bit earlier in my career, like maybe like five years ago, when I was doing more like television appearances and more stand-up and stuff, that th there might be a couple people out there with some stories. Really? Where I just was like, <laughs> fuck, really? I mean, come on. What? You know, this again? Like a little bit like that. Right, like, right. God, I just got off a plane and the car's not here. Come on. Like, I'm exhausted. You know, True. a little bit like that. And then Absolutely. I realized, no, you can't be like that. Ever. Uh, I mean, you can if you have a good enough publicist, right? That was my job. So I would call and be like, where's the driver? Like, where's our chicken salad? No. Like, and where are the almonds? Like, it was just, that was my job. And I think okay. I got tired of just having to be a bitch. I yes. would stop the interviews. Like, we had press junkets. I'd have step in and be like, you can't ask that question. Nobody cares about the star other than the fact they got divorced. Yeah. That's why everyone's here. Right. That's why the, the lady from Japan came. Like, she's like, I want that story. <laughs> so it's just like, it's so awkward for me to then have to step in and use a translator and tell her she can't get what she wants. You know, yeah. it's just a bummer. And that's part of the reason I stepped away from PR. I was tired of it. Are you by any chance watching the hit series Selling Sunset? Oh, I love Okay, because there is oh, a cut. Okay. We were DMing yesterday, me and Christine. Oh, Christine was on the show a little I while love ago. Her. So, okay, so there was. So, speaking of Christine, there's mm -hmm. this scene. Now, I have not finished season three yet, but I'm almost there. And the girl, Heather, is dating Tarek of what was their show? Flipping. Flip it or flip it or sunset. Flipping out. He divorced. Not flipping sunset. That's a, no. that's a mix. <laughs> Tark had his own show for many years right. with his beautiful blonde wife. They got divorced. Yes. There's still that weird story where he ran up into the hills with a gun or something. Yeah. I don't know if he's killing coyotes or... But anyway, he seems Poor to be Tarek. fine he now. Hug. And he's Is in he love... Is he like Moroccan or what's going on? The name Tarek? Tarek Alamusu. Because... <laughs> I guess so. Because yeah. I babysat a little kid named Tarek. And oh. they were... And the dad was... Persian. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, because I thought he was so Middle it's a, Eastern. It's, but he yeah, it's a, white. So but Tarek beautiful. is a Middle Eastern name, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, anyway, so she's in, you know, looks just like the ex-wife. So she, she doesn't really like, does. she doesn't like Heather that. Really does. She doesn't like anyone wow. saying that, but she's in love with Tarek. Yes. And, and then she goes, oh my God, Tarek and I did an interview recently. And then they asked about Chriselle and Justin Hartley getting divorced. And then of course that's the headline. And I don't want her to think I'm using her for publicity. And I thought that was really interesting because I've been in that position before. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going down the red carpet and people are going to, you know, they start out where they're like, oh, my God, Heather, you know, your stand-up special. We love your podcast. Uh -huh, okay. So what do you think about Caitlyn Jenner? And, you know, when that story mm, first came out. That was crazy. And I remember I was, like, terrified because... They said, what do you think about Caitlyn Jenner? And, and I go, oh, I think, it's, I think it's great. I go, but I don't know why people are taking this opportunity to attack Chris, like another woman. Mm. The headline comes out. Chris oh, Jenner's best friend bashes Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, no. And at this time, no one could say a negative thing about Caitlyn Jenner. Sure. Otherwise, you're going to be pegged the worst words ever, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was like, holy shit. And so then afterwards, I had bigger, like, you know, Entertainment Tonight and Extra, like literally calling me on my cell phone. I don't know how they get your number. How do they do get you, your number? I, do you want to do? Know. Do you want to do an interview? And I was just like, No, I'm not speaking on this Oof. subject. No way. But I think for that, that can be really hard. And then I know that, like, with other people, um, like everyone was wondering why is Larsa and Kim Kardashian no longer friends? Oof. And I think it went down T -T. that path. T T. Yeah, that Tristan Thompson. <laughs> well, you can see it's Tristan Thompson, but I think it's also that she started getting interviews and stuff mm -hmm. and using those opportunities to – she thinks she's Team Kardashian and defending the Kardashian camp and everything that's right. Kardashian. Right. But then they see it and they're like, why is our, like, third best friend getting headlines before we even give the story? Mm. And I think – Makes sense. 
Yeah. So wow. I think it's a it's very careful of like. You gotta be careful with the Kardashians. I would never say anything. It's only nice things because I've never I haven't worked with them, but I've yeah. Like, I've just in one like art gallery with. The but Kardashians, I'm saying even if you say nice things, you you still have to watch out. You still have to watch out okay. because then they think that they that you're using them as an opportunity to further yourself and your own mm. press self promotion. And you're like, yeah. oh my god, I was just walking down a red carpet. Right. And so once you sort of know, then it's like, it's it then I think people navigate it wow. like no like they don't even talk about each other they're, they have a rule about if they're doing an interview you're not to ask them about like how's Kylie or Kent no it's like I'm only going to talk about myself oh, I didn't know that yeah Ooh, that's good tea I didn't I know I mean that. that's what I've that's what I kind of <laughs> heard that, that in that yeah. way yeah you know, their story is their story. And like, Got but it. it doesn't, it doesn't leave for really the juiciest interviews. It doesn't. Because it doesn't. you're like, all right, well, what else what is else? there? Like, like, I know Harry Hudson, who's friends with Kendall and zipped, like mouth shut, won't give you anything. Oh, definitely should not. Yeah. I'm like, give me something, Harry. Come yeah. On. Yeah. Because. Give me anything. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Or like, I mean, imagine lips. if you're Stassi, the best friend of. Kylie, your whole career is your. Oh, best. I thought you meant Stassi Schroeder. I was like, oh, we're talking about her. No, but okay. the other Stassi, <laughs> the other one, yes, yes. Kylie's yes. two best friend, two point Like she stuck her in that mansion and feeds her and shut up. I feeds her and says, "You get mm -hmm. the same ass as mine. You wear the same outfits as mine." Photo they wear a lot shoot of camo. today, a lot and then of camo. they always do like the matching things. And I remember when I was when I was a little girl, my sister and I. My mom was into buying like two outfits, you know, Cute. the same but different colors. Right. But because my sister had blue eyes and I had brown, she would just get it always in blue. And then I got whatever other shit color was available. <laughs> that's why you're successful. The people that get what they want never do anything. <laughs> but I feel like that's what it always is when they do these matching outfits. Totally. It was like, it's like Kylie goes, okay, the white is cuter than the black. So you're going to do the black, or I'm going to do the white with the orange accents. You're going to do the black with the green accents. That's awesome. I feel like Kylie gets up an hour early and gets ready, and then yeah. she's like, now you can get the leftovers. <laughs> okay, so you love J-Lo. Yes. Okay, um, let's talk about Ellen. What is your thought on Ugh. everything happening with the celebs that are um, – Defending her on Twitter. What are your thoughts? Well, the thing that I always bums me out with this is when I was like a lowly assistant, the managers would always defend each other, right? Whatever happened to us, they would defend. They'd go and defend each other. And I feel like the celebrities... The management of the companies of the that you company, work for. Exactly. Okay. They would, the managers of the... The entertainment managers would all defend each other and kind of put us down. And I feel like that's what celebrities are doing. They're like the managers. They're stepping in. They're defending Ellen. They're a friend. I'm like, just because you were on her show doesn't mean she's not an asshole. Right. <laughs> like, there was a great TikTok of this person like being like, this is Ellen behind the scenes. Go kill yourself. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. And then at the end of the video, he was like, this is what she is on camera. Be nice to everyone. It's like, she's playing that double. And I know a lot of people, I know the executive producer of the show was my friend's dad. She paid her staff during the writer's strike. She is amazing, but she also is very hard to work for. Mm -hmm. She's a nightmare. Again, this is all allegedly. Like, if you eat fish, you have to take a mint. She, like, stopped someone's barbecue. One of the producers was having a barbecue outside because she's vegan. She stopped the barbecue. It was the girl's last day. Like, let her eat her meat. Like, oh. you know, there's a lot of this juicy stuff about Ellen, and, and she's also been very transphobic. There was um, an actress, uh, I think she's a YouTube star, Nikki something. She was on the show, and she said Ellen didn't even say hello to her. She was, like, on the show. Like, promote, like she was a guest. She was not in the audience. So, oh. there's, and again, this is all allegedly, but But, I mean, how could her, she not talk to her? What, you mean, didn't she, she didn't do say the hello interview? To, she just did the interview. Like, didn't say hello to her before, oh. didn't come to her room, did none of that. So I mean, I think I think you know you get to a place and you don't need to do that. You don't need to do it. Okay. Like, okay. but I, I no, that. I don't think it's okay. But I'm saying yeah. you it, so many years go on, and once you're down that path, mm -hmm. every year you're gonna get worse and worse. So the first year you're like, let me meet your parents when they come to visit, you right. know, and right. oh my god, and everybody's coming after, and da da da. da. And let's go on, you know, do things. Then, okay, I don't need to meet people's parents anymore. Okay, <laughs> fine, I got it. I get it. Then, to the point where don't look. Then you, ten years down the road, it's don't look her in the eye. Don't, right. you know. I remember my friend's um, stepmother was a flight attendant, mm -hmm. and she said that Helen Hunt was in first class, and she she had to not talk to her she had to ask the assistant what did she, what did she want and she's right chicken there. or fish yeah right there <laughs> so, what the hell she's like she'll why have, do i love that <laughs> she'll have the chicken That's amazing. you know and it's like it's really fucked up but it's a little amazing but what is it also when people say don't look them in the eye i don't understand 
what's up with eye contact? Like, what is it like demons will come out of your, what is so horrible about looking someone in the eye? I think I it's insecurity. With a lot of celebrities, like the A-list people I've worked with that were nightmares. I try not to mention those, but like they, in elevators, they don't like when people were in there. There's a lot of agents at like CAA that have, even though they're not celebrities, they have that too. If you, if you walk into the elevator and they're there, you have to leave. Like there's all these, oh, it's like, a power trip. I think it's a power thing. Was it that in the movie Prada? In the Deborah yes, Prada where yes. she's like, sorry, 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 yeah. sorry, Miranda. <laughs> yeah, Miranda, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I think it's a power trip, honestly. I think it's a power trip, but yeah. I think it's something that I, I just think you start to play with it. You start to get the power. Mm -hmm. You start to play with that, and you see that everyone's accommodating. No one's saying, like, oh, shut up, asshole. No one's saying, and, and you start keep taking more and more and more and more. In the end, you're all by yourself at the top, and then you wake up one day, and there's a bunch of articles exposing your assholeness. And you might be replaced. You know, that's yeah. kind of crazy. Who would have ever thought Ellen, you know, was the queen of daytime? But people get tired of it. And I think in COVID, people got tired of celebrities. The reason my videos are doing well is because people got over celebrities. People yeah. love celebrities. They would have they would have come for me. But I think because of COVID, you know, what Madonna posted and Vanessa Hudgens early on saying COVID's like the the equalizer and all the stuff that all celebrities said, people kind of turned on them a little bit. Yeah. So it kind of was in my benefit, actually. And I, well, I just also think like, I think people are sick of watching Zoom TV. I mean, I'm, and especially when nobody even like bothers to put on some mascara. It's like- Or make their bed. Make your bed if you're on a Zoom call. I mean, seriously. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it was, um, I just saw that on a, a Watch What Happens Live. I can't remember the guest. But I was like, wait a minute, is she in a hotel room? And if she's in a hotel room, why wouldn't she have had the maid make the bed at least? Something. Like, yeah. you're on Watch What Happens Live. Like, I don't think you need to like, you know, redecorate, but like, right. yeah. Something. They put a flower in the back or something. <laughs> a little like, ambiance, something. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, even like Kelly Clarkson, who's like beloved, <laughs> I get it. You're a mom, you're going through a divorce, it's COVID, but like, a little blush. Brush your hair. A, a little concealer. I mean, yeah. I understand we, we commend you for not bringing in Glam Squad, okay? But like, you're telling me that. Prior to getting this show, you did not know how to put on mascara. If I can do it, you can. You do it. forgot <laughs> how to do like just because you've had a makeup artist right. for the past year and a half, you are just inet like you don't know. I'm like, what did you do all these years before? So I'm just saying. From Justin to Kelly, she had a makeup artist. She did her own makeup <laughs> in that movie. Come on, <laughs> like she can do it. <laughs> From Justin to Kelly. <sighs> so what? A couple of things that you said about Ellen was like exactly what what you're saying. Yes. You were not the person working for her. Then other people, oh well, then you should leave. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't like the job, hey, we. I don't want. I didn't want to leave, but now that the discussion is open and I've been sitting at home for seven months. I am going to sing like a canary. And like, that's what's happening with some of the people. I am going to tell my story. Exactly. And, and actually, I had had enough time to look back on it. And it was fucked up and weird and dysfunctional. And exactly. I'm going to share, you know, like, exactly. that's it. And I'm upset. And, and you have to uh, account yeah. for the fact that people are feeling anxious or nervous about COVID. Right. And that's influencing them opening up, talking about how Porsche had to apologize on Ellen's behalf. There's a lot of alleged stories. So it's like... Wait, I, Porsche. Wait, what's that story? So basically, um, there was a drag queen that was on the set. Uh -huh. And um, I can't remember the drag queen's name, but it's from RuPaul's Drag Race. And Ellen kind of snubbed her, didn't say hello when she said hello to her. And then Portia came back and apologized to her and was like, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm so sorry that Ellen was just in a mood. Like, how to kind of m make up a story. Who has the hardest job on earth? Portia de Rossi. <laughs> I agree. Poor Portia de Rossi. Or, or like the ER of the most crowded COVID hospital. I don't True. know. True. Like, I mean, that that's a lot Poor of... Portia. Having to deal with. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, mean, I did almost get in a tiff with Ellen because, you know, the little TMZ bus, I was trying to back out. Yeah. And then she decided to like, she was going to Craig's and she decided to get on the bus and do like pictures and everyone started coming off the bus. Okay. But I had to get out and like, I had a meeting to get to. You were was, on the bus or where were no, you? No, no. I was like trying to back out of like, I was like oh, parked okay. in front of Craig's and I was trying to leave. Okay. And listen, I was going to a date, so it's not like it was that important, but I'm like, bitch, I got to get some dick. Like, can you move your around? And she was like, I'm taking photos. And I was like, can you ask the bus to move back a little bit so I can leave? And she was just not having it. No, why so would she? Wait. So I had to wait. I was yeah. late to my date. So anyways. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. What I've, when the TMZ bus has gone by and I've seen it, I have, like, rolled down the window and had, like, my husband or something film where I'm like, hey, it's me, Heather McDonald. <laughs> and there's usually nobody recognizes. But on occasion, one person's like, awesome. oh, my God. And then I'm like. 
Didn't I make your day? Oh, that feels Didn't good. Didn't I? And that's the way Ellen Those are felt. Goals. I'm making these people's day. How dare you interrupt? This is the one nice thing oh, I'm true. doing all year, and all you're right. trying to kill it for Fair me. Fair enough. Yeah, I really messed so up. So, what's hard. your prediction for Ellen? Let's give our. I do celebrity predictions. Okay, what's my prediction? Let me think. I think. I, I don't think Eric Andre is going to take over. There's been a petition for Eric right. Andre to take over. That's a little out there. I think Kelly Clarkson might drop her show and jump in because I feel like she was already being groomed for that. But how can you do that? Is it on ABC as well? Um, I think her show's on NBC. I'm not There's no sure. way you can switch networks. Can you like, just there's, do that? No, no, she's probably got a contract for seven okay. years. Because she no was way. being groomed by Ellen, I thought. I heard that story that like that was initially the plan. To have also, her have I feel her like show. groomed is not a good word anymore. <laughs> Is that frowned upon? Am I using outdated lingo? No, but it's just like everybody always talks about grooming now for like pedophilia and like rape. Like I was groomed. Oh, great. This is the one part of the interview that's going to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. No, but anyway. I, it's still an okay word, but it's, okay. Just like, it's just like the word transition. Got it. Like there was a time where like, you know, you'd be at a party and someone would be like, well, it's been hard because my, I remember we were literally there. We were at a party. My husband said... It's been hard right now because my mother is transitioning, and everyone's like, she is. "Oh good my, for her. good for her!" <laughs> like, are they going to call him grandpa now? And we're like, "No, they're she's selling the house in San Diego and going to an assisted living place. She's transitioning." <laughs> so it's like there's certain words that just have become outdated. I yes, got you. not you. outdated, but like they they've taken on another meaning that Absolutely. that you know technically is still in the. Yes. Dictionary. See, Dad, like, I learned from Juicy Scoop. My dad's yes. like, you don't learn anything from entertainment. I learned so much. Don't use groom. Grooming. Got it. Triggered. Problematic. <laughs> what else? <laughs> yeah, transitioning. Okay, That's so um, you, but do you think she really is going to come back? I think honestly, she's going to do a special. Uh -huh. She's going to do some kind of special where it's just like her. I wave at people and like her quirky, weird Midwestern humor, and then people are going to love that. They're going to kind of fall back in love with her. She's going to give up the show. There's too much negativity around it. Her saying she's in jail, that was a bad start. <laughs> oh, when she was in the Montecito over Yeah, and I was like... And then p there was like a whole conspiracy theory that she was being held against her will because there was a camera guy in the background of her of the window. And that's why she said jail was her way of like telling people to rescue her. Do you think her so. camera crew in Mon at the Montecito estate had to use an outdoor bathroom? Absolutely. A hundred percent. They're digging a hole. There's not even an outlaw. <laughs> They're just digging a hole. <laughs> And they're probably eating vegan food, so that's going right through them. Yeah. So, yeah. Did you see that other article where people put, like, all the worst cringy moments of Ellen together? I saw that. Well, well done, Snapchat. And I thought the best was the Dakota Johnson was the best wow. interview. That was cringe a When she was just like, you didn't invite Wait, me. Wait, why don't you do, why don't you, who do you want to be, Ellen or Dakota? I want to we'll be, be Dakota. I okay, like you do a Dakota. good Ellen. Okay, I don't really do an Ellen, but I'm going to try. This will okay. be the first time okay. ever. So, uh, you had a party, a birthday party, didn't invite me. I invited you, Ellen. I feel like she's, like, very low. No, no, you didn't. I literally sent you an invite. Like, there's proof. Like, she wouldn't let it go. She's like, my manager sent it, and my assistant. No, be your, be Dakota, keep going. Okay. Keep going, yeah. Okay. Um, I sent it, my manager sent it, everyone sent oh, it. I, I don't think I saw it. I don't, okay. It was there. No, because I know that you invited me last year, but I, why couldn't I go last year? Yeah, I had a thing. I was out of town. And then, but then this year, oh, all right, well, okay, guess you invited me then. I definitely did. She wouldn't let it go. <laughs> oh my God, it was so amazing. And then that one was really good. And then, um, oh God. What was another one that was really good? Actually, the Kathy Griffin one was kind of good. That was crazy. So Kathy too. Griffin came out with her Emmy. And one thing I always loved about Kathy Griffin is that she was so like, I fucking got an Emmy. I'm not going to act like... Uh, I love Emmy. her so like, much. You know how like big stars would always be like, where's your Emmy? It's a doorstop. <laughs> it's at my dad's house. My Oscar's like, in my nanny's room. Yeah, it's, it's like, in what? a storage bin. Yeah. What? And you're like, you know, she would like bring it out on the talk. <laughs> and she's like, I worked fucking hard. I'm happy yeah. to have it. And Ellen's like, yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I've had so many. Like, Ellen's had so many. She's like, yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad for you. And then she's like, I really didn't think I'd like your show because you're so mean-spirited. And I didn't think I'd enjoy oh, it, but your but your D-list show is is really kind of funny. So, good luck, you know. But then as it went on, I was like, then Ellen like became a little more human. Mm -hmm. But so I think some people are a little bit searching for 
the stuff. They you are. Know? Yes. And the way she interviews people, she holds onto that couch for dear life. I feel like she doesn't really want to talk to people. Yeah. What do you think about how people thought it was terrible that they allowed the drunk Jessica Simpson interview to air? Oh, yeah, that was kind of a bummer, but she's going through it. I mean, her book, there was so much allegations that came out. Like, right. she's just going through it, so I don't, I, and I worry. Uh, well, I, I watched know. it back, and I was actually on the Ellen and the Ellen producers' side. Okay. Being that I've worked on a TV show, Chelsea Lately, for all those years, right. fuck yeah, we would have let that thing go. First of all, she wasn't insane. She mm -hmm. is a ditz. Right. So you were like, is she a little drunk, or is she doing her, you know, chicken from the sea bit? Like, you didn't really know, and when I watched tell. it back... I was like, I really think Ellen was trying to like navigate this weird interview, right, right. and she's like, "Yeah, I can't, I didn't, I can't even read, but I'm a billionaire. Anyone can do it." <laughs> Ellen's like, "Yeah, anyone can." Like, that That's was inspiring. I thought like, it was inspiring. I thought it was actually really funny, and I'm like, that one I don't. And again, it's not always Ellen who decides like what. You know, obviously right, what gets right. cut, what's not. Absolutely. I mean, if she really wanted something cut, she would probably say it before she went home. Absolutely. But like, the publicist would have stepped in. 100%. Yes, would have like, been like, you're cutting this, we can't use but this. But I, so I think it's uh, several people, but I, it has always been in the industry from the moment that talk show started, a horrible place to work. I've heard. Oh. There has never been, but a steady gig, a fun gig, and you put up with it because right. you're doing a, a really great popular show that's not going anywhere. Mm, that's true. And again, no one's getting beaten or hit, but no. I guess people did say there was other harassment. So we'll see. My prediction is she comes back to okay. the show. Okay. Because she is not going to leave on this fucking note. She can't leave on this note. <laughs> she would have left. I think she would have left, you know, if this hadn't happened. But she's going to go, I'm going to do one more season to mm -hmm. redeem myself, and then I'm fucking out. I think so. So she's going to do, and she's going to do a big, blue-eyed, teary, <laughs> she totally is. I'm apologizing, This, is, you know, and then come back from the break sure. and be like, and now, and bring on whoever is the most popular, biggest supporter of her that's a regular on the show. I don't know yeah. who that'd be, Justin Timberlake, I don't know. Katy Perry, Kevin Hart, it's, maybe Some... George Bush, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Someone we'll like see. that that's yeah. just going to put a smile on everyone's face. Sure. And we're going to be off and running. Absolutely. And the people will be continuing to watch. Now, it, it, normally the show would come back in September. I Again, I don't think they can have an audience. So the, right. that's going to be a different vibe of the show. Definitely. Is she going to still be filming from her home? Or is she going to at least go to the studio and have like 12 people in the audience laughing? Do you think she might do like a Watch What Happens Live did right before COVID hit where they still kind of were having studio audience, maybe like 10 people from the staff? I think a bunch of shows are going to come back like Drew Barrymore starting a show, and I think it will be in a studio, but that without amazing, an audience. By the way. <laughs> I can't wait. Drew to, Barrymore. I can't wait. Okay, so I watch the the her promos, right? Because I I've done an impression of her forever, oh my God, it's and so she is so excited. <laughs> Let me tell you what a day with Drew is going to be like. First of all, I'm bringing back Mondays. Thank God it's Monday. Let's. I'm rebranding this. I'm sorry. We're going to do things that I absolutely love. I'm obsessed with cookbooks. <laughs> we are going to explore your favorite cookbooks. Um, I'm a Pinterest princess. Um, I'm obsessed with Pinterest. I'm a do-it-yourselfer. Um, we're going to talk about our favorite movies to watch with our kids. I'm like... <laughs> I mean, could anything be more boring to, than to watch? Now, is she a delight? Yes. I think, I don't think, I don't, I think she's a good choice. She's a mom. She's a known right. movie star. That's right. But my God, as someone that enjoyed daytime at one time when I was in my 20s, when I had my little kids, that is not what I want to fucking watch. No. Like, I want some fucking juice, no. something, you know, fun. Not that. Not uh, reading different cookbooks. I I'm gonna I dog ear the pages of my favorite. I mean, like oh. Ooh, the only way that would be worse is if Alicia Silverstone was her co-host. That's the only <laughs> way it could get worse. And they just baby feed each other all day. <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay, hold on. Wait, I have to get this back. Wait, it just went away. I don't know why my thing does that. Okay, so let's move on. Yes. Um. Oh, but then then I think she'll leave in a year. That one. She'll have mm -hmm. one last year. Everyone will forget. Yep, She'll end up on top. Right. And then, no. Because then she leaves on her own terms. Smart. Okay, let's talk about... Let's do it. Brittany, I know both these girls spent many a dinner with them. Love Brittany it. and her mom, Lisa Gastineau. What's the scoop here? So Brittany was um, hosting an art gallery opening um, in West Hollywood. And so my PR firm, my old PR firm, that fired me. 
you, you should have kept me. Anyways, um, they they had an art gallery opening, and so she was hosting it. So me and her worked together to create like a great event, and she kept kind of hinting that. Kim Kardashian and Courtney would come and she kind of What year is to, this? This is circa what? Uh circa 2018. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is this is hanging by a cobweb string <laughs> at much. this point in Pretty 2018. Much. Okay. Pretty yeah. much. Um and so she was kind of hinting at that. We didn't know if it was confirmed or not. And then they showed up. So Kim showed up, Courtney showed up. I oh, went to wow. eat. I went to the Abbey to grab a bite because I was like, this is a snooze fest party. No one's here. It's a bunch of like really snooty people. So I left. I walked back. There's literally 600 paparazzi. Like they were camped out in front of the event. I was like, who's here? And I turn around and Kim's walking out of the car and she basically bumps into me and is like, are you a mirror? And I was like, how the royal fuck does Kim Kardashian I should know who I am. And she was like, I was told to find you. And I was like, it's me. And I kind of lost, I never get starstruck because I've yeah. worked with most people. I literally hugged her, okay? And I gave her a kiss on the cheek. It was the most awkward thing ever. And she was like, nobody has kissed me in a long time. I loved it. And then she turned around and the paparazzi were there and said, this is my friend Amir. And we started taking pictures together. I and love I, was, it. I was dying. And then Courtney walked out and was like, who is this little man? And first of all, I'm towering over because I'm yeah. 6'2". And she's like, I love this little man. And then I walked them into the event. And then about 30 minutes later, Scott Disick showed up with Sophia Richie. And then the paparazzi went nuts. They tried to jump into the party. I had to block someone. I had to take someone's camera and put it outside. Like so this was a major success. Major yeah. success. Yes. Good. We were on every blog and I was just So then you life. do, so you love them still. I love them. There was, there was no complaints. Scott was a little dramatic, was like, can I throw my cash around the art gallery? And I was like, what do you, you mean throw your cash? You wanted to like do like the strip club thing, and I was like, I don't really oh, care. Why sure. doesn't he just actually buy a piece of art? I, I yeah, well, the art was, ugh. but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the art was like that Monopoly bullshit. Have you seen that? Those Monopoly art all over LA, the murals, oh, nightmare. Okay, I don't know why anyone's <laughs> buying that. It's like 40 grand. I was like, Really? Yeah, it was. Oh my god, hilarious. Okay. <laughs> um, and you said Kim was a delight. They were Kim wonderful. All of them a delight. Sophia Richie did not talk. What is this? What I'd wear if I was what? What is this? Oh, from? this is um, Paris Hilton. So I did a little. Have okay. you heard about her new slogan, Slivin? Oh, it was it slang and living, you said. Slang and living. And she's making banana bread in fingerless gloves, which is very un unhygienic. But I love Paris, so it's. Funny. So wait, when she's is that documentary coming out where she's going to talk <gasps> about her traumatic childhood? Do we know what it is? Like, is it, like, abuse? I'm really, like, we. everyone's been speculating. But I, really I think it is. I think she was in, I think she was a bad girl as a teenager. Okay. And back in the 90s, parents didn't know. And they, I think they sent her to a kind of controversial, controversial, um, not a boarding home, but, like, there would be, I forgot the name of it. The but boot they, camp? Yes, kind mm. of like, I think they, she might have done some type of boot camp. Okay. And I think, looking back, it was probably fucked up. They've all, A lot of those places Ooh. don't exist anymore. And so it wasn't like you were getting raped or anything, but I think there was a little bit of, like, culty behavior sure. and, like, maybe not getting fed enough or being cold at night or Got maybe it. some, like, um, kind of, like, military hazing, yelling at oh, you. Piece of, like, I think something like that. She was sent to Camp Pendleton, but, like, the yes. glam version. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. But they're still, probably still had to pay $40,000 because their kids probably were, like, sushi, living yeah. in a tent with no water. So, like, that's what I think it is. That's Absolutely. my prediction. I don't Absolutely. think it was... And I hope to God it wasn't that she was truly like abused or anything. But I think it's it's that. And I think that that is a traumatic thing. Absolutely. But I think that's something that's a story that we haven't heard yet and about her. And so they're teasing us with that. She's not very open. Like she's very private in some ways. Yeah. And it's funny because because of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, she's become Kyle Richards' niece. Like I right. love when she becomes Kyle Richards' niece. She's like kind of just mellowed out and is making a good 10 mil every year. Just yes. Just kind of out of the public eye. What a great just life. Just selling like, you know, poodle skirts to Russians. people in China. Yeah. yeah right. Like I, I love it. Yeah. But I, I think that's what it is. And I think the reason that she never shared the story is because it's like, she feels bad that her parents feel bad. Yes. Like, you know, she's had such a great life since. But now, like, t getting close to 40, she's probably reflecting and being like, oh, that was a really, actually really fucked up. Isn't that you crazy know? that she's 40? Like, she looks amazing. Yeah, she looks really good. Oh, it's Which insane. She, I, Fountain of youth. And that, just that long, lean, sexy yes. body yes. has always been good. That's her. Like, it's insane. So, Absolutely. okay. What we got here, our girl, Lisa Rinna. Oh, God, she was so wonderful. So I did an event at Coachella where, um, ironically, Erica Jane was DJing. We'll get to that. Yeah. But so there was Shoe Dazzle. Um, right. We saw it on the show, right? Yeah, or yeah. we saw photos of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So I was in the background of all that. So I planned everything. And then I, I walked up to Lisa and I was like, thank you for coming to the event. I really appreciate it. Teddy was there. Kyle was there. And they were all very sweet. And then Lisa was like, why aren't we taking a picture? Look at the way you look. Like, she was so complimentary. She's like, get in a picture with me. And it was wonderful. She was dancing and living her best life. Well, and she likes to dance. She was dancing with all the people. And it was great. 
I I think that's great. I'm totally not surprised. She's yeah. always been one of those people from way before uh, Real Housewives when I'd see her at events. We would always talk. She was always fun and nice. And um, recently on on my Facebook page, someone started like, what three people from different franchises, which I just realized I broke the rule, but where would you want to go and on what trip? You could take three housewives, any franchise, you and three other women, any place, what trip and why? Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, I would take Lisa Renna, mm-hmm. Sonia Morgan, because we need those water pills and the sailor moment. Yes, and all yeah. That. And then I would, I would really, I like Giselle, so I would pick Giselle. I would do those three. Yes. And I would go to. I really like when they go. Um, where do they go in Jersey? Where they went to? Oh my God, was it Puta Cana? I thought that was fun. Yes, that uh-huh. looked fun. It was like I love or a couples trip on Married to Medicine. I love the couples trips. Yeah, like, I wish I could just go on and just be like um, quad and just be alone and just watch everyone interacting and getting mad at each other and thinking I'm gonna steal their husband. I love it. So, I okay. I said Lisa Renna. Okay. Um, I said Luann. <gasps> That's a good one. And I said Kyle, but I, now I realize they're they're it's two from Beverly Hills, so maybe I would take. Um, oh God. I'd take like Brandy or something from Dallas, just like a wild card. Oh, but yeah, I, I like said the too. Amalfi Coast because, but I think that especially Lisa Renna and Luann, I think they are someone that would be fun to go out with. Right. Fun, to, they'd be into talking to other people. True, like the strangers, and but also laying down on a on a lounge, they're gonna we're gonna talk. That's what There's I mean. There's gonna free flowing like storytelling mm-hmm. that isn't gonna be like guarded. Mm-hmm. I don't like the guardedness. I'm not right. Speaking of guarded, answer. let's talk about um, Erica Jane. Let's. Oh, I have so much to tell you. Okay, to go. Um, so basically with Erica, she, so I was filling in with Diana. For Diana Mattis is like a YouTube star, and she was interviewing Erica. And I was doing gig work. I was getting paid $100 for that day. So she was like, can you fill in for me? Go to KTLA. Just get Erica Jane on TV. She was promoting her book, The Pretty Mess. Which, by the way, I feel like used the same font as Stassi Schroeder's book, but that's neither here nor there. I feel like Bravo <laughs> uses the same publisher. So just, you guys look it up, Pretty Mess. I'm telling you, the same font. Um, anyways. <laughs> This is 2018 yeah. again. So 2018 was a very traumatic year for me, celebrity-wise. Okay. Um, so I get to KTLA. I was really excited. By the way, there's multiple entrances. I finally get there. Yes. In the green room. I walk in. First of all, the creator of Sprinkles is there. And she was lovely. And anyway, I, the only reason I say this is because people are saying I made it up. And I want to make sure that people realize there was witnesses. Okay. So I'm in the green room. I walk up. Erica's sitting with her team um, with all of her little gaggle of gays and the makeup artist. I walk yeah. in and I say, I'm Amir on behalf of Diana. I'm here. Doesn't respond. Like, doesn't look up from her phone. Does not acknowledge me. So I was like, did she hear? me so I go and sit down because I'm like celebrities are good at ignoring people that are kind of non-essential right so I, I go you're a non-essential I'm a non-essential so, worker yeah, you're a non-essential <laughs> celebrity helper okay go on basically yeah um and then I go over and then it, right around that time I, I was a little famished so I tried to eat a cupcake from the the table but I what I didn't know is that it was sprayed for live tv so the creator yeah so it was uh, toxic so the creator of sprinkles runs at me and she's like you're gonna die if you eat those and then at that point Erica looks up and is like, who who are you? And I and I turned around. And I was like, I'm here. I was trying to acknowledge myself. Like I'm on behalf of Diana. I'm here to kind of take you on live TV while I still have a poison cupcake in my hand. Yeah. So I put it down. I walk over to her, and she's like, Oh, why isn't Diana coming? Nobody told me, and like kind of got upset. And I was like, Oh, I, I thought that was like relayed to your publicist. I'm so sorry. Whatever. I'm here to get you on live TV. Then I go back and sit down, and then her makeup artist and I knew each other. The gays always know each other. There's always like one degree of dick separation. Yeah. So I, I walk over, <laughs> I walk yeah. over, and I'm like, um, he's like, come over here. I want to show you. I did Megan Trainer's makeup, and it looks really bad, and I want you to see it. Just we were being shady, and it was the green room. Wait, he's he's admitting that his makeup was bad. Yeah, he's like, she did, she messed it up. Like oh. I guess she she like cleaned off some of it, and it didn't look right. Okay. So I walk over, and and I look at it right, and then at that point, Erica stands up between us, puts her hand between us, and goes, "Don't talk about." your clients badly and do- I'm sure you talk about me badly too and she was like who are you you're a stranger and again I'm like this is the third time I'm a mirror on behalf of Diana Madison should I play a voice no like she was not listening so then I go over there daggers staring at me giving me dirty looks was not interested and no longer acknowledged me as a person she was done I-, I think at that point she thought I had offended her in some capacity so I get a call from the PA and he's like we need to get her on live TV first of all she was wearing some hooker heels that we had to get her on the on the road because it's a like 10 minute walk for her it's like 15 minutes okay. so I'm like get up we need to go your book is on live TV. You can see it on the green room screen. And she's like, I don't need to do what you're saying. I'm like, Erica, that's my job is to tell you what to do. Like, we need to go on live TV. And she's like, I don't have to do what you're saying. So long story short, 
her like sidekick cutie whatever was like Get, you need to go and then she listened to him so then an hour later diana calls me and is like can you please come to the interview with me i really need you there like whatever so i go to erica's famed office above Katsuya in Hollywood. It's a dumpster fire. Anyway, we get there and I'm at her office. It's like neon sign galore. I'm like, I'm gonna have a seizure. This is a crazy <laughs> office. So we, we get there, I walk up to this giant table and her publicist is there and I know him. So I'm like, hey, how are you? And he's like, oh my God, nice to see you. He's like, oh, Amir is wonderful. Like, how was he on KTLA? Cause he wasn't there. Erica's like, oh, I know you. I know you. It was like we see so each other. So this is like later the same later, later day. the same day. Okay. It yeah. was like a we see each other candy moment, and it was really <laughs> awkward. And my and my my boss or whatever the like contract worker woman Diane, she's like, "What did you do?" <laughs> like whispered, right? Yeah. And then I was like, "Nothing." Do your interview. So then we do the interview. Erica was cold as ice. Like she wouldn't answer any questions. She kept saying every ten minutes. She was, I think she was coached to say, "I spend five hundred k on glam or whatever." She kept saying that. Okay. Um, and by the way, for people who think I'm lying, go watch a YouTube video. Diana Madison interviewing Erica Jane and I'm in the background wearing a cap. I'm on the corner. So I'm okay. there for people that are saying I'm lying. Anyway, so then she like is cold as ice, whatever. When we're leaving the interview, Diana's like, what happened? And I explained it to her. Fast forward four hours later, I get a call from Diana being like, we can no longer work together. And I'm like, what did I do? And she's like, Erica called, said that you cussed her out, allegedly. This is what according, it happened. It never happened. Like, I never did that. I was just stern. <laughs> like, she literally called from a private plane flying to Vegas and said that I had cussed her out and that I was unprofessional and that I had pushed her. I was like, what? Oh, because when she stood up in between you. She stood up between us. And right. nobody touched anybody. The gays don't fight. I was like, yeah. we are people about rainbows and like, I don't fight. Like, I might snatch a wig, but I don't fight. So right. I was shocked that she thought I put... Anyway, so she basically kind of, like, slandered my name. And then, I again, I, I will always say that I didn't lose a job because of Erica because they probably just didn't want to work with me. But a couple weeks later, it was done. Like, there was no other work from that company. From Diana's company? Yeah, Diana. Like, they were done. Yeah. They were like, we don't trust you, et cetera. And I no longer got any more gig work. So, again, I don't... But Erica calling from a plane is pretty, like damning. I'm like, girl, why do you care so much about me? Well, I mean, <laughs> something that I've talked about in yeah. Hollywood that happens on all different levels, which yeah. people don't realize, is truly there is a level of blackballing and mm -hmm. it can be really damaging or it can be just a little something here or there. Right. And there'd be times where like I was trying to get like on a talk show or something mm -hmm. and I'd see the other people they had that were way beneath me, way not as much credits, couldn't talk about pop culture like I could. Mm -hmm. I'd see my friends who were at my level also getting on the show, and I'd be like, what is going, going on? on? Yeah. What's going on? What's going yeah. on? And on a few occasions, I've really researched it, and it is a one person huh. being like, I don't like her because of this reason so many years ago yeah. or this particular thing, or them thinking – because they have a stronger relationship with someone who they believe does not like me. Right. They don't even want me to be on the show as a guest star or anything mm -hmm. because that could kill it for the bigger fish that they want. Oh, interesting. So, interesting. I mean, and, and... Or you could outshine people. There's a lot of that, too, like, right? Because I do hosting work as well. People will be like, oh, you're too opinionated or you're too aggressive. And that's what I love about TikTok. You can be that way and people respond to it, right? They right. Or that. like, or just having your own thing because, yes. you know, there's so many times where, you know, my career, especially before the podcast took off because I've been doing this for five years, right. where, you know, that was like, oh, my God, so upsetting. And what do I do? Mm -hmm. And I'd have another conversation with my agent like mm -hmm. well, can you see why they don't want me on the show like was there some did I flip my hair in someone's face in 2004 right. that did I say groomed uh, yeah, like, like what yeah. did I do <laughs> yeah totally and so and and it really is just down to like one person at that particular place that can just shut it down for who you might just whether... not even like you like I feel they like just... she just didn't like you I like me or I didn't do can anything turn on you like mm -hmm. I remember I was on the Tonight Show doing he used to have like bits where I was like yeah. would woulda, coulda, shoulda or something. And I would be on that and I'd been on once as a guest but then I would do these other little bits. Yeah. And it was great and Chelsea had a great relationship with The Tonight Show so like if I had to leave early I could do that nice. and everything was great. And then one day they just stopped calling about like huh. a year and a half before the show ended and I never knew why and I was having a hard day that day and I actually didn't like the way my makeup turned out which normally I really did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I kind of was like to the guy, okay, I'm just going to actually just go in my room and just like regroup. And I yeah. kind of like fixed yeah. it a little bit. It was mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. And I was always like, God, did the makeup artist say something like I was a bitch and now I not get off the show? So I re I found out and finally 
the booker of that show was now working on Chelsea and did say, you know what? My boss just decided she didn't like your performance that night and then was like, we're done. I don't want to have her on anymore, which would happen all the time on Chelsea lately, too. Like just all one time? Of, that's it? Just all of a sudden, wow. just not feeling that person anymore. And you're like, and that person, I mean, one time it was, um, I remember it was um, Tiffany Haddish was on a bunch of times. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the, the powers that be of right. that show just right. decided they weren't into her anymore. Wow. And before she really blew up, yeah. I saw her and we both did this like weird like technology podcast something like four years ago. Yeah. And she's at this time, she's not really blown up, but she's like a, reg a series regular on like an NBC sitcom. Mm -hmm. And we're walking back to her car and she's just like, Is, can you tell me what happened? <laughs> like, it's tormenting her. Like, what the fuck of happened? Course. Like, I did this show four times and I was like loving it. Of course. And I just said, you know, this happened all the time. And just sure. all of a sudden, that would be it. And right. there was no way, there was no letter you could write. There's nothing, there wasn't, you didn't tell someone to fuck off. You You're SOL at You that didn't point. show up late or high. It's just mm -hmm. like not feeling you anymore. And Absolutely. it's such like a personality, you know, subjective thing. It's Hollywood's high school. I always yeah. tell people it's it's high school. And the reason I, a lot of people were messaging me why I talk about it now. What's It's been two years. Why are you talking about it now? The reason is because I don't want people that are starting in Hollywood to get stuck and think that this town is run by an Erica Jane who, let's be honest, a lot of people question the fact that she was even in the A-list of what I posted. They were like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so the, there was a lot of those, like most of the comments were that. So I think at the end of the day, wherever you are in your life, just be nice to people. Like I was helping, I was getting paid a hundred dollars for like nine hours of work. Like, give me a break. Yeah. Like just be nice, you know, like, and not to toot my own horn, but like Jafar drives a Bentley. Like I live a good life. Like I don't need $10 an hour. Like right. I could be Jafar is your dad. Jafar is my dad. Okay, sorry. You know, like I have an MBA. I like, didn't know if it's a sugar daddy no, no, or yeah, what? Who knows, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, who knows? It's LA. <laughs> um, but like I have a really good family. Like I have an MBA. I'm successful. Right. Like, I don't, I was doing that because I truly love celebrities and I wanted to right, be entertained. Yeah. So it just felt like she kind of burst my bubble in a way, but it worked out. Like I, I'm happy that I'm not a publicist, but. I always say I'm one person that really made me aware of a way to act when they're a guest on a show is Christian Shenoweth. Oh, I love her on TikTok too. And so. I said, I was saying, because I just remember going, wanting to talk to her because she was a Gamma Phi Beta and so was I. Mm -hmm. And I, she was on Chelsea lately and I go, hi, um, we don't know each other. I'm, and she goes, oh, you know, she recognized me from the show. Right. And I go, but I was a Gamma Phi Beta. And she's like, oh my. But before I could even say anything, before I even, she was like, this is, Amir, this is Kelly, this is, and she Aww. introduced every single person. Love that. And I just thought that is the way to be. Yes. When you're traveling with a group of people, you know, and it makes sense being that she's been in the business and she's been in, you know, hard, like on the road, right. on stage. Right. It wasn't handed to her. Right. Like other celebrities, absolutely. Sometimes hey. Broadway people are a little better. They have yes. like a little bit more class. There's like it's like, it's harder to get up in Broadway. I think. But I even think like an A-list actor that's been acting since she was 20 is gonna probably do different than some of these housewives. And I always say the housewives that have a real acting background before, like like Lisa Rinna and Kyle and stuff, mm -hmm. they've presented themselves in a much different way sure. than some of the other housewives that, that shot up to stardom that mm -hmm. really was literally handed to them on a platter. Absolutely. Um, like, does Chicago get, like, commission from housewives, like, putting it, the housewives <laughs> in their show? I'm like, every season, it's like, I'm in Chicago. I'm like, are we supposed to be impressed? Well, you know what? I, I, there was, when I was growing up, there was, Greece was on Broadway. Yes. And Greece would always throw in, like, a sitcom star to be Rizzo. <laughs> like... <laughs> Rosie was Rizzo, Brooke Shields was Rizzo, awesome. and I'm like, why is everyone fucking being Rizzo? Awesome. And so they, I think Chicago was like, is kind of doing that They're to doing bring it. in like this touristy crowd. That, Smart. Um, if I'm going to see one show, I don't, I don't care about this, mm -hmm. but at least I know Lisa Renner, or at least I know Erica, Erica yeah. Jane. Mm -hmm. And but I heard she did really well in it, which yeah, doesn't that's surprise what I heard me too, absolutely. because she really is a performer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um. And I just think, you know, I th I think her her life story is is interesting and I can see how it could sure. be 
I could see how your situation happened. Absolutely. But I'm happy that I wish she would open up a little more, right? Like, yeah. I, I wish she would let us in, like, even with her son and some of her background. I, I just wish that she would. And let's be honest, like, I get her team. The publicist's job is to protect her. So right. the fact they're not making a comment and all the interviews I've done, like, they've made no comment. And they're saying that I'm a liar and that I was nowhere near the interview. I was at the table. First of all, do I even look like someone that would be chained to a desk? I would get up and do whatever I want. Like I, you know, I had I'm a similar, I had a similar story happen to me. Yeah, and I immediately addressed it, and was okay. like, "If I hurt your feelings, it was because of these five things that happened right before, where these five people had fucked up, and I was really mm -hmm. annoyed by it, and mm -hmm. you hadn't gotten the information, and I thought by like immediately addressing it, right. that, um." That that would be okay. And the people that listened to it, you know, was like, okay, I see the point. But I don't know if that was the best thing. I also think there's a, a place mm. of just ignoring it okay. because then it, it blows up even more if right. you respond. Because then it becomes like a clout thing, right? Like then you're responding back and forth. if she and responded, then, then I would post that. Like when Kelly Dodd right. came for me and, and wanted to like <laughs> call to me an asshole. What was, why did Kelly Dodd come for you? Because I said that she was a bit transphobic with her daughter because she laughed when her daughter was dressed as a man and was like, oh, it's so funny when people transition, <laughs> like and made a joke. Mm -hmm. And so I called her out and she was like, you're a bitch. And like, you're a like, da -da, and started coming for me. And I just kept posting everything she said. Yes. And then she would get more upset and then people were reposting that and it just became a whole thing and then she called me a cunt and I was like so happy yes exactly so happy so it, made, I, it made my day so I think sometimes if if you're this the celebrity being attacked for something that you right. don't believe is true you know either a you try to address it with that person personally mm -hmm. like because they just want to be heard mm -hmm. but then also know that they may use it like that the way you did sure and then <laughs> it people that were never aware of of the fact that you called her that, now they are aware of it. Right. And they're hearing her response and then they're piling on and piling on and piling on. Right. So, you know. And her response made it look like she was guilty because she was like, what do you know, you idiot? And I was yeah. like, oh, I'm an LGBTQ activist, sweetie. Yeah. Like, I do know. Like, I right. know what right. you said was transphobic. So like, but then it ran, Then again, she's she's does what we want. She's not right. wearing a mask. She's running around with Fox News anchor. Like, she gives us what we want what, from so Kelly So like, Dodd. what... What could she have done that would have made you change your mind and not blow it up? I think I'm just a Gemini and I'm Persian and there's a lot of dramatics and a lot of fireworks. <laughs> I like to just blow it all up. <laughs> I think I just was quiet for 10 years, you know, like you work as an assistant. Right, and, and now like, you just do not give a shit. I just shit. don't give a shit. And I'm like, what, why? Do like, you feel like, um, because lately I've felt like this, when Ricky Gervais did the global, uh, the Golden Globe Oscar speech, Wait. and he just kept going, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Y'all are pedophiles. I don't care. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. You're never going to ask me again. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I think a lot of people, like, COVID has made a lot of people in this industry, too, like, just be like, I don't fucking care. You know, it's Absolutely. going on so long. I don't know if I'll Absolutely. ever, like, if we'll ever film anything again. <laughs> and you're just like, Woof. Who gives a shit? You well, know? I got a Quibi show, and there's so many. They're quarantining our clothes. We have to do five COVID tests. They're, everyone's on hold. What's the Quibi show you're doing? Sexology. I okay. might be doing it. So, like, I don't know, though, because there's so many things. What's I'm it like, about? Like, it, it's about sex. So, like, the host run. She was. Did you ever see, um, what was that show? Oh, my God. The one where they can't have sex on the island. What was that called? Oh, yeah. What was that? It was oh, on uh, Netflix, right? Too hot to handle. Yes, so the girl, she was on that show. She was the sexologist on that show, and then she got her own show. Okay. Yeah. So I'd be on that talking about sex, but they're gonna quarantine our clothes and our underwear. I'm like, girl, what is going on? So right. it's too many hoops. I'm like, for three hundred dollars, not worth it. <laughs> That's what you're getting. <laughs> yeah. So wait, are you out or you're just waiting for it to see what's knows? gonna happen? I might just like trash it now and do it. Who knows? Yeah, like I'm a walking <laughs> contradiction, honey. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> okay, DJ Khalid. DJ Khalid. Yeah. So I. This is like. Is this so... about him not going down on women? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you definitely went down on me. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Um, just kidding, it, it, everyone. Just kidding. That was alleged. <sighs> okay. Um, so I worked for a photographer. This is like when my life was just really in the dumps. Like Earth Cafe was my high point. Yeah. I was luxury at a distance. I had a Range Rover, but it was like trash. Don't get too close. Like that's what my life was okay, like. Okay, got it. So I, I worked for this photographer, John Russo, gay photographer. That's yes. how I worked on J-Lo's shoot, whatever. So he decided that he wanted to do PR for some reason and was like, oh, Amir has PR experience. I know John Russo, by the way. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We Go can on. talk off camera. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so he, he like basically was like, you're going to be in charge of the PR department. Great. So he's like, our first client is DJ Collins Furniture Line. Like it's so niche. I'm like, what? <laughs> So they gave me... Like, when I think of a great sofa, 
I think of DJ Khaled. <laughs> Another one. It's like really, it was a red velvet couch. <laughs> It's a red velvet couch. Who wants that? Not oh just God. like good velvet, not like yeah. that plush velvet, like the velvet right. at an, like a gas station bathroom, like chair. I don't even know. Yeah, like, okay. It was just a nightmare. So I had to promote that <laughs> shit too. And then one of the things, the, they had cabinets <laughs> with keys on it, like major keys. <laughs> And they had ta- they had um, doormats that were three hundred dollars for a doormat that said another one major key DJ Khaled. I'm I I don't know who his fans are, but we sold that shit out. It was it got really? picked up by all these publications. They paid us in cash. Some guy arrived in a briefcase of cash. It was Wait, so they, the odd. furniture sold out. Yeah. Oh my. I don't know how he kept promoting it, and I think just with his. Has followers. he ever done like another season of I don't it? Think so. just moved on. I don't think so. I just I think at that point after I promoted that and it did well, I was like I need to leave Hollywood for a second. Okay. <laughs> like my life was in in a bit of a. But how was he? Did you meet him at all? He was lovely, okay. like so nice, Delight. you know, and just kept kind of building everyone up. He was Nicole great. Byer. So I did a photo shoot with her, um, and she was great. She was eating donuts, and she was wearing like fuck me heels, and was just crazy. It was in the bedroom running around, and was topless, and then we were on the street and she was doing that bird scooter and people were driving by and saying nailed it like during the photo shoot she was just cussing people out on the street was like fuck you like she just She's was great funny. she was okay, great good okay uh i know you like sheena share i love about her? sheena we're, she we're gonna text- hopefully do a tiktok duet together okay she just her. texted me um Aww. and she's moving to san diego she yeah she's with brock love. she loves brock i'm like can they're i watch you two like they're in love. they probably have a really passionate moment oh i would love to see that yeah they, they can do those tricks where she, he like flips her and stuff yeah, they're like having sex midair kind of thing yeah, yeah good, for nice. good for her okay. she's been looking for love dj james kennedy another hit dj <laughs> white kanye so i did an event for lisa vanderpump at tom tom so he was there and he came and he was like people were trying to take pictures you know they're nice lovely midwestern people like there's nothing they want a picture he's like you want a picture with me because i'm a reality star and i was like james you well, ha- this is your job well, yes this is Why, your job what do you think it is why would they want a picture with you this is your job i mean do i go up to a stranger at walmart and go can i get a photo with you no like no, unless you're going to put them on that website i'm surprised people he's like walmart. That, i always say people <laughs> Usually reality stars are really gracious about photos. Yes. Much more gracious than an A-list star because their life is being themselves all the time. It came late in life. They didn't work hard for it. Mm -hmm. A star wants more privacy. So I always say, hey, you see a reality star at at a restaurant? Approach them. Get your photo. Absolutely. Maybe hold back if it's Sandra Bullock, like, in the middle of a meeting with or with her two children. Maybe don't bother her. Yeah, don't go up to Sean Connery when you're 12 and he's like, I'm eating my dinner. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Just, like, you learn it the hard way. But he was also not sober. Yes. So I got to give him the credit. He was drinking And now he's sober and he seems delightful. Yeah, so I'm sure he's a lot better. Donald Glover, Glover was awesome. Chow, Chow Gambino, he wouldn't let me make coffee because he's like, we're the same age. What are you making coffee? That's embarrassing. I'll make it. Like, he was just lovely. That sounds like something more to me. <laughs> sounds what more than that? Am I, is, is, it was like a fake answer? No, I think oh. it's maybe he liked you. Oh, I hope so. Sounds like me and Michael had a moment. It sounds like me and Michael B. Flirty. Jordan had a moment. We'll, we'll get to yeah. that. Uh, Melissa McCarthy. She was wonderful. She had a lifetime supply of chocolate, which is really random. But someone had given her a lifetime supply of chocolate. So we were always eating chocolate in the office. She hates chocolate. And she had a plus size um, clothing line. line. And I would always wear the dresses in the office. Oh, so you worked for her her specifically. I worked for her manager. Oh, So we get the clothes. And I would always try it on. Everyone was like, oh, Mir, you're so gay. Uh, Oh, my God. Just me being bored. Her her daughter and my son took a Groundlings summer class last summer school. I love Groundlings. And I was like, oh, I Your sons are them. hilarious on the TikTok. I'd love for them to be involved. I love that they get involved. Thank with your, you. I love they get involved with your shit. Now, again. Tara Reed. Oh, Tara. Um, so I picked her up at her house. She's dating some new guy, and it was like this condo, whatever. She was like an out almost 45 minutes late. And then she came in and she was just really like twitchy and yes, just Tara Reed. Very like what twitchy. you want from Tara Reed. I interviewed her when I was doing Hollywood Today Live, and she had like the red lipstick like on her teeth. Yes. And yes. I felt like it wasn't my job to say, take that lipstick off. No. <laughs> Yeah, so, I, not. so I didn't say anything, I, but it's haunted me to this day <laughs> as something that I should have said something. Absolutely. I not that say that it. interview is like gone, you know, viral or anything, but it just. You got to say the lipstick thing. I mean, it was, she didn't have any lipstick luckily, but she was wearing some <laughs> crazy outfit. And when we went to a video game conference, it was the most random thing. All these video gamers running up to her, they all probably jacked off to her from American Pie. It was just so <laughs> awkward. It was an awkward night. And she was like, should we go out? And I was like, I'm going to drop you home. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to go home. This has been already so wacky of a day. She was great, though. Okay, we know about Erica Jane. We know about Erica Jane. Michael. Michael. He's so cute. 
so he had Creed body. He'd walk around his house, and I was the house assistant at that time. Yeah. So I was helping him move in. He'd walk around in boxers and no yeah. shirt. And he was so flirty. He would flirt with a wall. So he'd flirt with me. He would flirt with everyone in the office. He just flirted with the wall. Like, he was such a flirt. And I, being, like, so young, I was in my 20s, I thought we had a moment, but I could be wrong. I think you did. I, we were, I was in his closet, and he was just like... He was like, are we going to kiss? And I was like... What? I was like... Wait, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I was like, Michael. And he's like, I just like to josh around with you. And I was like... I started twitching. I was like... Uh, uh. And, I, and I was such a professional person. Thanks a lot, Dad. He was always like, you have to be professional all the time. So I was like, Michael, I have, to, I have a job to do. And I went downstairs and started receiving packages. I should have received his package. Okay. Yeah, he came on to me. Can I analyze? Yes. A hundred percent, he wanted you to go down on him. Absolutely. A hundred percent. That was the vibe I got. I mean, he, there has been stuff that's come out about him. So. This is my opinion. Yeah. We're not saying it happened. No. I'm saying that was the fishing fucking rod. Yes. And you swam away. I swam away. I really, th that's my, you know what the Tara Reed teeth thing? This haunts me. This haunts me that I <laughs> walked haunts away. It me. I wish I'd ever heard this part of the story. <laughs> I know, it really haunts me. I And again, I'm not here to out anyone that's not my job, but he, there was a vibe between us that goes beyond sexuality. <laughs> we loved each other. He was wonderful as a person. So but I have nothing, nothing bad happened. To, nothing happened. Zero. And and I do know, I, I do believe there's a lot of straight guys that are very good looking. Yes. That love all the attention mm -hmm. and they Anywhere and you're always like oh my god is he getting no he loves the attention from the gay guys yes. not you know so who knows but in Absolutely. my personal fantasy of the world mm -hmm. i think that was what it was okay? i think so too i think so too all right lisa vanderpump our girl here oh lisa so the same event for tom tom mm -hmm. we, there was the opening and she had agreed we were doing the party together so it was a joint event she only she agreed to come she said i'm only coming for 15 minutes one five. So she came with the dog. Some redhead woman carried her dogs in, and she refused to take pictures of anyone. People were all there to see her. Like that was the whole point. I felt like it was just I such a bummer. Yeah, I don't want to take a picture. I mean, I'm tired. <laughs> I've got. Do you even you don't you, what you didn't realize that day, darling? Whatever your name is, is that I mean, oh, my two swans had been under the weather, and they were not feeling good. And Ken was supposed to take. Hanky to the vet, and he failed to do it. And you know, I mean, uh, and I had to do this event, and I was only scheduled for fifteen minutes. I stayed seventeen. She did stay like about twenty minutes. And ago. nobody, you know, and here I have to hear about it. I mean, I do so much for the charities and the LGBTQ community, and the and, dogs, and, and the dogs, and my bartenders, and the Tom Tom, and. I mean, I am Pandora. I mean, I just, I mean, come on. Then you go do the TikTok and you're talking the shit. You know, it's like, really, really? Is that is that what you're going to do to me now? Yep, yep. That was, that gave me life. She'll probably never respond to so that game. Wait, me let life. me also respond as Erica Jane to yes, your story. Yes, yes. I'll tell you what happened that day. Um, I was at KTLA. I was ready to sell my book. And this guy comes in, doesn't introduce himself. Starts talking about Megan Trainer. Um, you know what? She's a fellow artist. She's a singer. I didn't like that shit. I said, if you're gonna talk about her, what are you gonna say about me? You're gonna say you don't like the fact that you did two pigtails on my head at 45 years old. <laughs> you know? I don't want to hear that. So I said something. Then I saw Diana Madsen, and then he shows up again. I go, really? This guy again? And I said, I don't think he's uh, someone I want to see his face again. <laughs> and Diana said, all right. I don't care to see his face again either. Little did she know. Next. Next. <laughs> Here I am. So that's what I think happened. That's amazing. The Toms, you said they were delights. Absolute delight. They were lovely. Tom they, Sandoval, Tom Holding Schwartz. my hand all night. Ariana was there. They were all lovely. It was just wonderful. What do you think about that. Tom uh, Sandoval's like makeup and always wanting to dress up like women and exploring that side of himself? I kind of love it. I'm here for it. I think men need to, especially in the U.S., I think men need to explore their sexuality. When you go to the U.K., I've made out with straight guys. I'm, people are very open there. People hold hands. People are not so worried about their masculinity. Mm -hmm. And I love that Sandoval plays with that. He's also, you know, Ariana's very open about being bisexual as well. So like, Seems to work cares? for them. I yeah. think they seem to have, like, one of the healthier relationships oh, featured on the show. Which is shocking. <laughs> yeah. So I think whatever yeah. works for them. And I think it's a really smart thing that he's kind of the first celebrity to tap into male makeup and yes. I mean why the 
the best my husband ever looked is when he did a little bit on Chelsea lately. And I was like, take down that red face. And they like, oh, my God, glowing. Yeah, and yeah. there's been times where I've been like, Peter, can I just. It's a little highlighter. Before we go, can I just like do like a little concealer, a little bronzer, mm-hmm. a little take down the red. Mm-hmm. And so I think if there's if it's coming in a man package. Yeah. I think guys could benefit from a little. I think men can up. wear makeup. I mean, there's a new makeup line that's coming out. It's going to be at CVS for men, and it's because men get it's, you know it's not pimples, the sand of all, or it is a sand. No, it's called Strix, and it's like it's, oh. yeah. So it, and it covers up pimples and and men need it. Like, it's yeah, like why, not? why not? Why um, not? Chloe. She's unrecognizable. I love her, but when she posted that video, her necklace was so photoshopped that the necklace chain was broken. I was like, girl, what happened, girl. Girl. See, I True can't recognize you. So like I that. don't know how to do all that stuff, and I don't want to learn because I love when people see me in person and say I'm so pretty in person. You really are in your body. I well, I'm just looking. saying. I think it's a bummer then when you exaggerate yourself so much. Like sure. when you see, like some of these Instagram people that I've interviewed. Mm-hmm. I'm blown away when they walk through the door. I'm like, holy fuck, what was that? Like, I thought you were a size zero. You're an eight to tw- eight to ten, which is not big, right? Which right. is normal. But when you're but making your yourself photos look, yeah. look, I th- I was ready for you know anorexic Annie to walk in, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, it's curvy, healthy, normal, right? And the way that they can like manipulate things, it's amazing. I don't know how to do it either. It's better not to know it. Okay. These are just pictures of her looking. I Kylie. Mean, Kylie's gotten her boobs done. Just admit it. I don't know why she refuses to admit that she's gotten plastic surgery. What do you think of um, their former housewife, uh, their former, sorry, the Kardashians' former makeup artist, um, Joyce? Joyce. Do you remember blonde Joyce? I, oh, yes, yes, yes. She was kind of like had a masculine energy. No, no, she's super feminine. Oh, I don't know who Joyce is then. Who's Joyce? Okay, uh, we'll, we'll pull her up real quick. Oh, but okay. Joyce has like a funny voice like this, uh-huh, and she uh-huh. was always on the show, and she's blonde, and she's uh-huh. really funky and like a really great makeup oh, artist. Oh, yes. Okay, that's what I thought was a little bit masculine. I don't know why I thought she was. She would wear like big chunky sweaters. Maybe I thought. Well, was... now she's no longer working for them. She has her own that. thing going. Yeah. She's divorced. She has four kids with a couple different dads. Four? Yes. Wow. She is... Her Instagram is just a lot of like looking at herself like <laughs> she's had work done like everybody else. Yeah. Her boobs are huge, right. but she's going on fabulous vacations. She seems to have a lot of money. That's like Steph, the assistant. They all do well when they leave. You and work then there. They do, you yeah. Leave. And then they. But, you know, I, I don't think she's like doing anything with them anymore. But I just saw her on The Real House of Beverly Hills and she was doing Erica's makeup. Oh, I miss and Not that. on the trip, but in okay. L.A. Okay. And mm. she was, a, I mean, a really, really talented makeup artist. And yeah. then she, like, started a clothing line with her husband. But then that husband she's not with anymore. And Is that she, when Mario came in? Kim's, like, person? No, Mario oh, was, was like, okay. early on. Okay. Mario yeah. was, like. He has no expression on his face. <laughs> He's like, I'm so happy to be here. It's like, no expression. So, anyway, I just didn't know what <sighs> you thought. But but it's, it is sort of interesting. Like, I liked her. She wore a lot when, of bomber jackets. But then when you see, like, how they go, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if that ever bothers them that then they're, they're like their person that was their like mm. you know makeup artist right. catering to them all the time right. catering to how they look right. then step out of the shadow and have their own thing going and right. their own selfies and which right. essentially is what you were doing Kim right. where you kind of set the the plateau for it but at the same time she was there while it was happening so it could have been some of her influence mm. and then she's doing it on her own interesting I wonder if there's a bit of resentment from like the Kardashian camp, where it's kind of like we kind of help. Or maybe you it's just like we don't know to go where to go from here. Like if you're not the makeup artist anymore and you're doing your own huge thing, like right. I'm happy for you. Right. But like, are we gonna still be like seeing each other and talking on the phone? Because really, we only saw each other when you're doing my makeup. So right. now, where do we go? And then people are always like wondering, like, <gasps> what you know, what huge thing happened? And, and you it's unfollowed like, each other. And yeah, and it's like, that. oh, but and also people get burnt out. So sometimes right. they're like, you know what? You seem to be you know, annoyed that you have to be here at 5 a.m. because right. you have a, a million followers and you can have your own thing going. Exactly. So if I get little Johnny out of makeup school right here. Desperate for attention. Fucking too. so excited to be here. Mm-hmm. We'll mm-hmm. be here at 4 a.m. Right. You know, making my coffee and doing my makeup. And exactly. like, like so I kind of get exactly. why 
then people go, okay, I think it's time that like you move on. Yes. I get a newbie. You have to start afresh. I think every 10 years you need to kind of move people out because they get kind of tired of the same job and all the NDAs and all the kids. So and not all everybody, that. though. I think some people really? – I always remember Suzanne Summers had this um, personal assistant. and mm -hmm. My mom was a realtor, and mm -hmm. she's like, oh, um, yeah, we're they're buying a house for the assistant. Oh. Like <laughs> – and she'd been with her for like 25 years. Right. Like Camille, Camille's person. That yes, woman is like, always I there. I think that there can be okay. that, okay. you know, just like you could have, you know, like a nanny for the whole time or a house. True. But I think for the majority of people, yes, in this industry, I think if they I think if they show that they're like not enjoying it anymore, they have one foot out the door, then you as the employer kind of has to see that and not get to the point where it's like not it's not a good break exactly then. yeah exactly because they need to feel like they have some kind of fire under their ass yes yeah, yes absolutely absolutely oh who's this bella thorne what's up with her <laughs> she was like pouring beer on herself um when did she TikTok. like went from like wait wasn't she like a disney person who became a porn star yeah, it was zendaya she was a she was a disney star with zendaya. when did she start doing like porn and stuff does she do porn i didn't i didn't know i thought I didn't, she started she doing you porn or something I mean, who knows? Everyone has an OnlyFans today because of Beyonce. Everyone made it cute. The gays were doing it for 10 years, but now everyone has an OnlyFans. Really? Every Instagram influencer has an OnlyFans. No, I know, but like... I guess it's not just porn. They're trying to say, no, I'll just, like, Sonia has one, Dorinda has one. I think they're just, like, showing, like, their closets or Sometimes something. Sometimes it's inside stuff. But a lot of times the OnlyFans, you subscribe, and I'm like, oh, a picture of you in a thong. What a waste of $15. Yeah. Like, that's not what I was looking for. Like, Black China's OnlyFans, though. She Apparently she makes, like, $12 million on it. What she was showing mean? the receipts from her OnlyFans. She was like showing screenshots. And there was another celebrity, I can't remember his name, but he like made 15 million, like some rapper that was like putting just, his only Just showing his dick. I don't know what he was doing, but I was like $12 million. Like what? You know what? Good for Black China. <laughs> I she... just saw a billboard on the way here in Downey. Wait, <laughs> well, she, she has these billboards around here. Lash. She lives within walking distance from my house. Oh. And so I think she likes to see her billboards when she's like going to Ralph's. Got it, interesting. And okay. um, so I am glad, I'm. you know what I say, hey, you're doing all this, it's kind of the same feeling of like being a sugar baby, like hey, yeah. you would, you're you gonna fuck these ugly people for free, just fuck an ugly one that also gives you money. I kind of get it. Well, so if you, you were go. gonna give all this shit nakedness on Instagram basically for free, show a little bit more, and make $12 million. Exactly. Like her bathing suit, there was like one strip. I mean, we would just move that But strip. my son did, we did have a moment when we drove past Ch Black China's house. And he was like dead serious. He's like, Mom, do you think your career will ever get so bad that you have to have a OnlyFans page? <laughs> Such an existential question. And I said, no. All right. Hang on, we live. You're funny. We live you, within our always, means. You're always funny. I'm not like buying like a Louis Vuitton bag every day. Uh, we'll be just fine. I will okay. not have to lick my own asshole for you to go to college. <laughs> I just want you to know that. The good thing about being funny, like we are, you can write jokes. You can do stand up. Like there's always stuff for us to do. It's fine. It's not dependent on my my asshole. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Who's this? She was some. Uh, she's not even important enough to talk okay, about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, this has been so much fun. So much fun. Um, I, I really. Here. I'm excited for you. Um, tell everybody where they can follow you and enjoy what you're doing. Absolutely. You guys can all follow me at Amir Yas Official on Instagram and TikTok, and I'm actually selling Nyx products. Yes. Hats, mugs. Gave hoodies. me a cute. You gave me a very cute mug. Oh, I hope you drink it out of yeah. it and enjoy yourself. I've like loved being here. This is so. Fun. This is like the deliciousness scooping. And then, shit okay, I so if I, I'll get your personal number, please, because I might want before the summer's done. I think I do want to like go to Orange County for something else. Please. I don't know, just to please smell come. the money. <laughs> and maybe <laughs> we, can, maybe we, yeah, maybe we do something funny together. Yes. Um, I love you. I you're love you great. Too. I'm really happy Thank with you. what you're doing. Thank and you. um, and even though we talked about ripping on some celebs, I admitted my own bad behavior. Same. I also um, said what might have been happening there. <laughs> you really owned it. Lisa Renna owning it. Yeah. You, did it. you know what? I remember that cutie patootie in Coachella back when we could go out and have some fucking fun. And Amir was total fucking delight. And I had a lot of fun with him. And I just want to say, you keep doing what you do. You keep doing you, boo. Thank you, Lisa. Where's Harry Hamlin? <laughs> He's making a fucking blueberry pie that our daughters are never going to fucking eat, okay? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Bye. I'm sorry it's so hot in here. No, it's totally fine.